Welcome back to the Leeds United episode. Today we have the most difficult episode of the entire save so far. Manchester City to begin, which ordinarily on its own, you'd say, actually, it's not that bad, Chez. Yeah, it's just the fact that Manchester City is then followed by Chelsea away and Manchester United at home and Tottenham away as well. Happy November. The season took a little bit, not necessarily of a wobble in the last episode, but definitely we found ourselves facing a strong test for the first time. We lost to the Arsenal away from home by two goals to one. We should have beaten Brentford, to be fair. They scored in the very last minute to get the draw. As such, we've dropped in the table down to third, but considerably behind Manchester City. And should we lose this next game, which, let's be honest, we anticipate that we will, that gap to first is very much opening up. We don't really anticipate challenging for the Premier League title this season. What we'd love to do is finish in the top four to then go for the title next year. That's a very strong looking Manchester City side, isn't it for sure? Nice to see that they're actually starting a full strength side and there is no uh, player in it. Who is it? It's always, it's the guy that, it's McAtee, isn't it? It's because it's the guy that was on loan at, um, the guy was on loan at Leicester. James McAtee normally starts at Cam for them. They've got Zucani on the left and Rodrigo on the right. Phil Foden at Cam's got a hat trick yesterday, last night in real life. Phenomenal third goal. Rodrigo and Pedri in the midfield as well. Afonso Davis, Lenormand, and Ruben Diaz are now Martinez and Edison. Uh, bugger. That's a pretty good starting lineup for Manchester City, isn't it? So we'll do what we can here. Uh, but what we can do is probably not, not that much. I'll give it everything, though. Of course, thank you for your continued support on the save. Do drop the video a like. If you're enjoying this save, continue. Thank you today to Frantic Atom, to T Goldie or Goody. Not sure how to pronounce that, I'm afraid. And sports commentaries as well for your continued support, both in the comment section and on stream as well. As sports commentaries mentioned in this comment as well, uh, in that last episode, I do apologise about all of the bots that seem to be everywhere in the comment section of videos at the moment. Uh, I'm trying my best to stop them from commenting and also to remove them when they do. Please do just ignore them. It's a YouTube thing that is widespread. Every now and again, we get swathes of bots and us content creators have to try and figure out a smart way to get around them. As of yet, we haven't been able to find one for those bots. Regardless, let's see what we can do here against Manchester City. Of course, missing Ethan Ampadu still. So Alex Scott continues in the midfield. Other than that, we are at full strength. City in the away kit, us in our home, and hopefully three points. Oh, God. I'll take a draw. Here, for those that are asking in uh, chat, City's, uh, City's ratings are as follows. 89 for uh, Edison. I know Martinez only 84 at the moment, but we've seen from the player career that he gets to uh, 87. Diaz is 90, Lohan 85, Davies 88, Pedri 90, Rodri 91, Foden 90, Rodrigo 90, Haaland 94, and Zakania 82. Rather stands out there, doesn't he? To be completely honest. Wow. Right, okay. Uh, good luck, Chez, I think, is probably the phrase I'm going to be muttering in my own head. Oh, that's a lovely little back heel. Zakani in a central area finds Pedri. Pedri with options. One of those is the even higher rated Rodri, who was the one that scored the other goal for City last night after Foden's hat-trick. We've managed to get it off Pedri there, and City's first attack doesn't quite go as they hoped that it might do. Somerville, oh, if, if he hadn't stuttered there, maybe we could still send... The ball through the middle for a chance on goal. The answer is no, we cannot do that. And Foden has the runner out wide. Zakani's been heavily involved so far, but not found on this occasion. And this could be a very swift counter-attack here. They do have some pace, though, in their defence. And all over the pitch, actually. Oh! Through the legs of Edison! Leeds 1, City 0! Nobody saw that coming, but it was brilliant build-up. And a deserved opening goal. Genie Routier through the middle. Positions himself between the two defenders. And squeezes it low between the legs of the keeper. We're in front at Elland Road. Rodri at left wing. Not his ideal position. Crossing not his strong suit either. City with that press on possession loss. That, to be fair, actually wasn't the culprit for our goal earlier. We just played very good football. And we might be doing so again here. Genie Routier. Alfonso Davis is with me. Showing no interest in closing me down whatsoever. Because of course not. Edison makes a good save. And we won't score a second. But maybe from the set piece. Somerville to deliver. Routier is the one underneath this. Lenormand clears. And Erling will make sure. Uh, 
What distribution? I was just flabbergasted for a moment there. And what a run by Rodrigo as well. Still going. Howland with the tackle. Rodrigo! Melier now making the goalkeeping efforts at the other end of the field. Zakanyi spins well, but Van Evijk intercepts. Oh, there's that possession on. We'll press on possession loss. Phil Foden on his right. And that's what happens when Phil Foden shoots on his right. Haaland. Oh, he's done me with the back heel. Rodri, Foden. Oh, my God! Get out! Well, it felt inevitable, didn't it, really? Try and try and try again to get the ball into the back of the net. And in the end, nobody was going to be Erling aerially, were they? Rodri should have buried that. Who was it that was up against him? Van Evijk, I think. Erling Haaland wins that header all day long, doesn't he? Excellent save by Melier from the first chance, but... Never mind! It's 1-1 against Manchester City. Are they going to end the half in front here, City, perhaps? Late on. No. Strauk in the way. Keeper seemed to dive after the shot had come in then. Or, like, significantly after the shot had come in. Oh, look out. No! Oh, I wanted to go there and then to Van Evijk and didn't quite manage to work it. Haaland had the option out wide and elected to go central instead. Here's Foden. That's tackled. Is there the time for the chance before half-time? Probably not, as I've been forced to go sideways here. Maybe so. Martin has the time and space to get forward here. And I've got options with me. And over. And over. And Jack Clark draws the save out of the keeper. Will we get the corner? The referee should allow us it, but he has. We'll see what we can do here then. Will we go in at half time? 2 1 in front. No! Martin into Somerville. Where is that going? Do we do? Rodrigo down the right hand side then. Terrible pass. Rodrigo. Oh, he's beaten me. Rodrigo's still going. Tackled. Very important. Toe in there. We'll switch this just to get rid of it. Jack Clark will win that. And dink. Oh, it wasn't a dink, was it, Milan? Zakanyi. Drawing one defender out of position. Now Vanevite can get back into position. I've missed the man. Was it in the box? I think it was. When I say I missed the man, I mean I missed the ball. Flattened Zakanyi, and I think it was just inside the area. Oh, didn't quite time it right. The ball was there to be won, but slightly late to get there. It was just inside the box, and Erling Haaland makes no mistake. Jesus. That was well tucked away. Yellow card for Van Evey. Second goal for City and for Erling, and we're behind now. Alfonso Davies. Nice little drop of the shoulder. Erling's in. Good save by Melier. Anywhere will do. Anywhere will do. Milan Van Evey gets rid of that. Thank you very much. Phil Foden to take it short. And Pedri. Pedri into the middle to Doku. Nice tackle. No. Still, potentially, there was a lot of City men left forward. Chaibi. Trust his dribbling. Trust his dribbling. And a Somerville. Counter-attack was on. Toby. Nice. Oh, Pedri's intercepted that as well. Jeremy Doku. Erling's with him. It's a lovely turn. Here is Haaland now. Oh, and Rodri. 3-1 City. Game over. Match one for... Well, I think the champions. They won the league last year, didn't they, Manchester City? Considerably so for Manchester United. Who, actually, I think are... No, it's Chelsea away we've got next. Uh, after losing here at home. I don't know, is this going to get any better away from home? But Chelsea aren't having a strong season, I don't believe. Continually in this save, as is the case in real life. Chelsea underperform. Unlike when we were manager there at the beginning of the FC24 cycle. So uh, we'll have to take defeat on the chin here. But fingers crossed, at Stamford Bridge we might be able to do something a little bit better. Maybe from the corner we can nullify, not nullify, lessen the deficit. Posit could be there. Ben White is up. And again. And again. No. Goal. 3-1 we will lose. It's the final whistle. City just too good in the end. And that extends their gap at the top of the table, at least over us, to seven, no, eight points, I believe now, unfortunately. I think it was Manchester United we were level with in second and third, both on 19 points. So we should still hopefully be inside the top four. But 
I don't know as we'll be winning the title this year. Not that we, as we say, planned to. Top four would be lovely this season if possible. Chelsea on 10 points so far certainly are struggling. They are down in 14th at this stage of the season. So, I oh know it was Arsenal we were stuck on 19 points with, not Man United, sorry. Chelsea we have next though. Then we've still got Manchester United left to play and Tottenham as well. Oh, dearie me. Chelsea in 14th, as we previously showed you. Their form is not great. Only one win in the last five, which is... Oh, why they are where they are. Davinson Sanchez in goal. Davinson Sanchez. Robert Sanchez in goal. If they had Davinson Sanchez in goal, I think they'd be lower than 14th. Masrawi, Buddy, Ashley, Robin Koch, former Leeds man, and uh, Jose Gaia at left back. Lepotka and Caicedo in the middle with Enzo Fernandez on the bench. Marlon and Kunku and Nico Jackson with... Uh, Patreon player Joe Caller on the left-hand side, actually, which is an intriguing inclusion, considering he's not that highly rated yet. So Chelsea certainly making some strange tactical decisions, for sure, which is going to contribute to their lowly league position. I've changed the kit here, but actually, even though we're away from home, it's like we're going to be playing in the home kit. I'll tell you what, because I've already gone to the effort, effort of changing my kit, we'll play in the fruit salad kit. And uh, we'll see what we can do. I don't think I'm going to make any changes to my starting lineup after the defeat to City. I don't think anybody really deserves to be dropped. So we'll see if we can do something different at the bridge. It's Christopher and Kunku. Oh, Nico Jackson, keeper came, got there, needed to. Oof. Ah, I was supposed to go sideways. Why it went forwards? I've absolutely no idea. I think my thumbs are on backwards so far today. I've been struggling with my passing. Somerville on a, a counter, though. Peru's made a decent run. And we will find him here to El Peru. He's going to close the gap in the box. And give us a 1-0 lead. Those travelling fans in this bottom corner will be very, very happy in the shed end. As Joel Peru scores for Leeds once again. Alex Scott nicely out wide. Early inside. Look at the run. Mutez going. And it's a terrible pass. Win that, please. Well up, Archie. Somerville. Eventually gets it under control and finds Martson, former Chelsea player, of course. Ian Martson, strong challenge to say the least. And the referee has come across and said, too strong, sir. Au revoir, Benoit Buddy. I see there you are off the pitch, pal. Through the back of Gini Ruter. Chelsea, a goal and now a man down. Whether it was a red or not, I don't know. But certainly wasn't a great challenge. And that very nearly was an excellent through ball looking for Archie. Gray that could have seen us take a two-goal lead. Well, if things were already not going that well for Chelsea in this season and in this game, they've just gotten a whole lot worse. Jack Clark. It's Van Evo. Peru, one way than the other. Ah, nearly. Can we win it back? We can. That was a, a through ball to the left back, apparently. If you say so, game. Right, now Daniel Marlin's going to try and punish me for that. Really must have my thumbs on backwards because that was awful. James Madison's just scored for Tottenham to give them a 2-0 lead against West Ham. Although, oh, how Spurs fans will have wished that was the case in real life earlier in the week. Ten-man Chelsea still looking for a way back into it. Joe Caller now substituted off. And Enzo Fernandez on in his place. That's a decent delivery. Archie Gray takes the decision out of his goalkeeper's hands. Alex Scott with a great turn from their corner. If I can time this right and play it right. Chelsea. Go 2-0 down. Chelsea 1. No. Chelsea 0. Leeds 2. Wrong team, wrong number. Oh, Caicedo. What are you doing? They really are... Just causing all the problems for themselves, Chelsea. The straight red card. Undefendable defending. Oh, it's not even defending. Just brain dead. Absolutely brain dead from Chelsea. We lead by three goals to nil. And we'll take all three points, thank you. Final whistle sounds pretty immediately afterwards. That is a very pleasing win. Whether it would have been quite so straightforward had they not got the red card, I'm not sure. Spurs with a big win. City with another big win as well. So they'll keep their position at the top of the table. We've got Porto Menense next, which will quick sim. Coquelin confirmed as sold to Everton. We're trying to raise some extra funds to be able to sign some youngsters from the youth academy. Because at the moment, 
I've got £30,000 in the bank and I can't afford to sign anyone that's come through with a Youth Scout report. And I've got a £2.1 million youngster in there. So I'd very much like to call him up to the first team. We will rotate for this next game against uh, Porto Menense as well. We look to firm up our position in the Europa Conference League group with three wins from three so far. Porto Menense currently bottom of the group after only picking up a single point so far we've won all three of our games like we say and we're going to quick sim this entire group stage just purely for time saving because we really don't have to play these games in the group stage we can concentrate on on the league football and ensure that we get ourselves a decent result in that particular competition we'll give chris Cresswell's up to 78 now so i am hoping to get him a decent amount of football unfortunately drama is still injured so he can't uh, play on this occasion, but we will quick sim Porto Menense home game and get a 3-1 win. Archie Gray, Nicola Pepe with a brace as well, give us a 3-1 victory. The result in our group is Bishaksha here win by two goals in against Cluj, which might mean that the group is already decided. It's not. We will actually no, we're not we're not guaranteed top spot yet. Five points to gap with Bishaksha here still to play, but we're definitely through. And Clues are still the only side with a chance because Porto Menense are out of the group stage now, unfortunately for them. So we're through to the knockout stages. Lovely. I'm going to go and swap my top around. An eight-point lead still for Manchester City. And then three of us on 22 and two on 20. And two further on 18, including Sheffield United of all teams. I think we might be having a bit of a fight for this top four position this season, don't you? Right. Manchester United are the ones we're going to welcome to Ellen Road this time around. Manchester United in sixth at the moment and chasing those top four spots that we currently occupy. An Anna in goal for them. New signing in there, Joel Matip at centre-back, which is an intriguing one. Luca Hernandez, also a new addition. Shiomeni has been at Man United for a little while now. We've got Carreras on the left-hand side. Tammy up top with Mason Mount behind him. The old Chelsea partnership. And Berardi still on the right. Nicolo Barella on the bench as well as an option. And Julio Leschi, a patron player, makes the bench for Manchester United. So, GG Julio, you're working your way towards the first team squad. Although it might only be because Harry Maguire is injured, unfortunately for you. Regardless, at this moment in time, we're at full strength with our first team 11 again. So, fingers crossed. Well, first team 11 outside of Ethan Ampadu, obviously, who's still injured. Back in the home kit for Manchester United at home. Nice tackle by Jack Clark. Oh, it could be an electric start here. Andreas Christensen, though, is ensuring that we don't have it. Quite so easy. John Matip steps in well as well. Okay, well that didn't quite go as anticipated. I thought they were going to cut them apart Chelsea style. We absolutely did not. Speaking of Chelsea style, Mason Mount very kindly gives me the ball. Peru holds it up. Man United have been a very tough opponent for us historically in this save. Oof. I had to take that first time. And now I dealt with it. You'll remember Shuamini's rocket of a goal last year. Strauch, of all people. Yeah, probably not. Van Evoy, Jack Clark, lovely turn. Through ball for Peru on his left. Inside is Somerville, missed earlier. And Anana denies him again. Well, it's all pressure in the opening stages, isn't it? Can we make it pay eventually with a goal? No, not yet. Casemiro across to Schuermini. It's ball into Tammy Abraham. Out wide to Berardi. Cuts back inside to Tammy and a quick ball to Mason Mount. And there is Carreras. Alvaro Fernandez, the man of the moment here. Man United youngster buries it to give them a 1-0 lead here away from home. It has been a horrid game of football from both sides. No quality in this one whatsoever. And the one moment that sees some is Man United taking a 1-0 lead, unfortunately. Bugger. Right, time to fix up. We've been... I've been... Really poor in this game. Got a good win against Chelsea. We played well against City. I don't know. It just feels a little bit disjointed in this one for some reason. Jack Clark could come short here. That would have been helpful. He'll come short now, which is then helpful. Looking for the run of Peru. But Luca Hernandez cuts it out. Maybe I'm not actually being that bad. But Man United are just stifling all of my offensive attempts with good defensive positioning. Van Evijk with some good defensive positioning of his own there. I see the overlapping run of Van Evijk was the intention, but Joel Peru is in here. And when he's through one-on-one, -on -one, he scores. 
That is 1-1. We were not behind for long at all. Thank you, Mr. Peru. Get me out of a hole there. Tammy into the middle, maybe. wan Saka, in fact. Just able to get that away. Suamini versus Peru. Peru comes off on top. Stay on side. Crescencio. He has done. Matic just can't deal with the agility of the man. Anana was able to keep Crescencio Somerville out in the early stages of the first half. But in the second, we make it two and Somerville does have his goal. Get in. Nicolo Barella on for Manchester United now. So they've brought some extra quality on off the bench to try and get themselves level again. Mason Mount been moved out to this right-hand side. Whether there's been a formation change for United or not, I don't know. But they're going to take the corner here as Mason earns it with 25 minutes to go. Anthony now coming on for Alvaro Fernandez as well. So yet more changes for the travelling United rather than United here at home. And Nicolo Barella, well, we said to bring on... to get some extra quality on for them but that has been anything other than quality there for him same for me though and Barella might be able to make up for that here looking to go all the way around the outside Jack Clark chasing and getting some of the ball there thank you ref and Barella actually hurt from that I apologize it was never my intention to injure the man but Peru's in 1v1 one one here and Joel again game over we lost 3-1 to one Manchester side we might be beating the other Manchester side by the same scoreline. Rasmus to Berardi. It would only be a consolation goal if we're able to get it now, Manchester United. But Ian Markson's trying his hardest to ensure that they don't even get that. We'll nod this back to the keeper. And that'll be game. A 3-1 win against Manchester United at home. Really solid result for this lead side. Back to full strength for this one. And very much showing so as well. Getting the job done. Now then, Spurs in a sim coming up next. They were the side that we drew with in the Carabao Cup, but then ultimately lost on penalties too. I'd very much like to try and get a little bit of payback for that if we can now in this next game. We're both on 25 points. We've got an international break in between. Is it an international break or is there... Yeah, no, there is an international break in between. It's a full 14 days, two weeks till the next fixture. So everyone will be fit again, provided they're not heavily involved in international football. It was all three of us on 22 points. Now it's all three of us on 25 points in those Champions League spots, other than the high-flying Manchester City. Well, Tottenham away, on the way. I need to change my top again. Spurs line up in a similar fashion to the game we played in the Carabao Cup. Still Vicario in goal, annoyingly. He was unreal in that game. <sighs> in the Cup, that unfortunately we ended up getting knocked out from. Uh, Guido Rodriguez there at CDM. Pape Sao and James Madison rounding out the midfield through The front three is exactly the same. Madison. How wide nicely to Humanson. Driving past the man. Little back heel. Madison into Griezmann. That kill to Madison again. Loitering with intent. Intent that doesn't come to fruition. Pascal Strauch in the way. Corner only here for Tottenham Hotspur in the 20th minute. Trying to force their way in front here. Whoever wins will be higher than the other in the league. Think we're higher than them though at the moment. But not anymore. Mickey van der Ven with a great effort from the edge of the box. I didn't know he had that in his locker. A goal from outside the box. From the corner, just loitering there on the edge of the D. Takes a touch and then just lets fly. Shot power too good. And Tottenham lead. Here's Porro. I mean, Griezmann is in here if they find the right pass. It's not as quick as he used to be, Antoine, but still just as good technically. A bit slow in the uh, decision-making area, though, there, apparently, as well. Slow of feet, slow of mind, apparently, Antoine Griezmann right now. That said, watch him score two goals in the second half to shut me right up. Here's Kulisevsky now. And, well, that's excellent footwork. And they might be 2-0 Tottenham here. And it will be. Slightly lucky. Was Madison onside? He was. They couldn't have gotten a more fortunate rebound there, could they? But they probably deserve the 2-0 lead regardless. They're playing really well here, Spurs. Which sucks. Scott spins well. And he's in behind here. Alex Scott. Lowest rated player on the pitch, I think. Well, you wouldn't believe it. What a finish. Alex Scott is proving to be a hell of a young player. I'm really starting to find out exactly why you guys have asked for years for Alex Scott to be signed in a career mode save. 
He's always been, whilst he was at Bristol City, one of those obvious players that everyone suggests because he's young, he grows well, he's at a lesser club. Since moving to Bournemouth, I don't know whether he's had much football in real life or whether he's continued the kind of development progression that everyone expected him to have. But certainly in this save, he is very good and better than his overall rating would suggest, that's for sure. If this Alex Scott had an overall of 81 or 82, I don't think anybody would bat an eyelid, given his performances so far. We're 2-1 down now. We're back in the game slightly, and it might, oh, if he could have acted a little bit quicker and found Klozik in the middle, have maybe been 2-2. It still could be Archie Gray with options. Jack Clark now with the effort. Vicari with a save, and Hossex, there it is! 2-2! No, it's not. He's offside. Oh, man. Devastated. How close was it? Flozek on the shoulder of the defender. Very close is the answer. Just his heel, Clark. Looking to get down the line. And inside here to Flozek. Jack Clark again. If he makes the drive for goal, we could be in. Van Evojk's on the overlapping run. Here he is. There's options in the middle still. Milan Van Evojk needs to find one of them. Alex Scott could. Tries. Fails. Still maybe Flozek. Clark, it's opened up, just have a shot, someone shoot, can't score if we don't, Chaibi might, Chaibi, Martson, Vicario, Vicario with a save, Martson face down in the turf, Genie Rute off for Joe Gellar, so we try and change things, Zemanski's come on for Spurs as well, Romero also, and that will be goal kick, that will be corner I think if Chaibi left it, it is indeed, come on, please, Second goal, please. Griezmann off for them now. And Quinones coming on. Oh, it's going in! Joe Gelhart with the impact off the bench. A second goal for him in this afternoon's episode. And a second goal for him in this particular game. What a header. That's how you beat Vicario. Brilliantly flicked on looping header. Keeper can do nothing. 2-2. Two -two. Chaby on the run. Go on, lad. Still going. Lovely little ball roll. Martson, Alex Scott's here. There are a number of options. Joe Gellart's in again. Oh, Joe. Could have shot. Still could. Joe Gellart. Oh, what an interception. What a toe-in from Mickey van der Ven. The man that set the goal scoring off in the first half stopped the goal scoring there. Guido Rodriguez into Szymanski. It's a Tottenham counter-attack here. Both sides desperate to try and win this. To gain an advantage on the other in the race for the top four. Quinones off the top of the bar. Tottenham nearly did win it right at the death. Still could. That's going to bounce away. Counter attack maybe for us. Ian Martin looking to drive past defenders. Now still going Ian Martin. Go on, lad. Teammates trying to rush forward in support. Martin needs that support. It might fall for Gelhart in the middle. It hasn't. Petro Poru plays it to his keeper who with a dodgy touch nearly had me... Wetting myself in my seat again. What a game of football this has been. If Klozik had been that far further on side, we'd have won it here. We still could lose it here. Szymanski and James Madison. Good interception. Is that game it is? What a game of football against Tottenham Hotspur that was. 2-2 it ends at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. One of the most entertaining games of the entire season and both teams deserved something from it, to be fair. Fantastic showing for those that were in the ground and those watching live at home. Oh, wow. Is the next game this month, Bushakshi, or is it next month? It's next month. So that will be the end of today's episode. And what an episode. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Would have been better if we could have maybe gotten the result against Manchester City or a positive result in some description. But, dearie me, wow. Well, we know what the situation is in Europe. How's the situation in the Premier League as we leave you? Arsenal still second, ourselves still third, and Spurs still fourth, although there's only a goal between us. Sheffield United still going strong, up in fifth continually, and only two points outside the top four. Man United and Liverpool sixth and seventh. A Chelsea recovering? They've recovered from 14th to 13th, so no is probably the answer there. Big games on the horizon as well. Especially for the fans. Leeds Millwall is always feisty, to say the least. That's all for today's episode, though. Do drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. Come across and join me on stream if you want to see all of the behind the scenes and all of the extra content. 
links in the description down below to Twitch or to the YouTube live channel. Might well be starting streaming on Kick soon as well. We haven't yet decided. We'll wait and see. That's all from me for here for now, though. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.